you're natural. You're in a hurry. So pretty. You don't have time Thank you. for 45 steps or 45 minutes in the mirror. We want something quick and easy. So this is actually my signature product from Gentry Kelly Cosmetics. It's called the Brow Lift. You may not have a comparable to this in your makeup bag at home, so pay attention because it's freaking awesome. This is a two year supply. So what I don't want to see you doing is like, this is my favorite. I put it all over my whole face. I even put it right here for cleavage, okay? This is a little bit of beeswax to give you an open look to your eyes. So Sherry has fantastic eyebrows. If you look like you were burnt in a fire like I do, then you have to go ahead and draw those on first. It's not a part of cute and carpool because not everybody has to do it, but the, luck, the unlucky ones like myself, I draw my eyebrows on first. So she's got full brows. We're just gonna take this and we're gonna put this right here underneath the outer two thirds of the eyebrow. Number one, it hides all the little hairs that need to be tweezed that don't belong there because we, we ain't got time to do that every day and they just pop overnight. We got 35 of them when we wake up. Also, if you've got really thick, coarse hair and you thread or you tweeze, you get the peppering, right? Within three or four days, you see them growing in. You're like, I just got them waxed. This will conceal all of that. So you don't want to go all the way. You're trying to create the illusion like you had some Dysport or some Botox. Now take a look straight into the camera and you see how that kind of lifts her under eye? It's pretty magical. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it doesn't look like pearly, like an eyeshadow with shimmer. Mm -hmm. Turn this way, and that does not photograph well. Turn this way. Do you do you do the um, highlighter above the brow? I've seen that too, where you do it I above the to. brow bone. I used to, but I think it looks too unnatural. It mm. sharpens up the eyebrow too much where it almost starts to look like you had it stenciled on brow. Mm -hmm. I like it just underneath here to lift this out. I'm not trying to lift my forehead out, but I used to do that. Oh, yeah. I jacked up a lot of people my first seven years of doing this. To be really honest, I wanted to write them all apology letters if I had their information, including my best friend who had purple eyeshadow and a crooked eyelash on her wedding. Oh Chin my gosh. Look down. But after 22 years, I just find out what works best for me after just trial and error. That's what makeup is, just trial and error. And you may not agree with every single thing that I say, but maybe you could adopt a couple of new things that you try and you love better. But everybody's different and makeup is an opinion and everybody has a different one. What is this you're just putting on my lid? This is an eyeshadow base. So, for the 40 plus, I would say even 30 plus crowd, I'm 37, so I'm not too far away. As we start to get all the here, and then some of us consider doing a blufferplasty for our 45th birthday to cut it all <laughs> off and start over. In the meantime, you, you already can see that. that. Yeah, 45th birthday, that's my present. My mom did, and it did wipe 10 years off of her face. So it's definitely something. Everyone on my mom's side, we all have extra skin here. So I've got makeup tips and tricks to help conceal those that I'll go over in a minute. Um, for the meantime, until you're ready, it's like Spanx for the eyes. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, just reducing the redness on the eyelid and making everything look nice and canvassed for at least, you know, the cute and carpool look is a nice way to look fresh and awake without seeing any kind of imperfections around the eye. So take a look. Oh. This is what we do instead of foundation, concealer, or powder on the eyelids. They're both oil-free. They're just made of beeswax, so they look more luminous and more like skin, not tight and dry. Mm. Chin high. There's a lot of brands out there, look down, that sell eyeshadow bases. That's essentially what that is. Two different colors, one to create brightness under the brow, and then one to more neutralize redness. And, of course, the last step of Cute and Carpool is the mascara. So we've got a little bit of the luxury mascara. I'm getting a good wiggle towards the base and twisting to separate. And again, now that you see the full cute and carpool, you can see how simple and easy it is. You don't need any makeup artist ability to do this. Anybody can do this. Okay, what you want to do is you want to follow the growth of the brow. And this has tiny little microfibers in it. So you can see on the end of my brush here, look at this. Look how cool this is. Two little fibers. Yeah. So it's putting those on there. And if you have any gray hairs, another thing that's really awesome, plus 40, is you get random black hairs that grow out of your chin, like goat hair, or the side of your face, <laughs> like mine, and my big mole, big hairy black one right there. Right? <laughs> and then hair falls out in places that you want it, right? So we're putting those tiny little fibers back where they belong, right into her eyebrow. So hold your chin up a little higher, and you can see how those tiny little fibers are being added to her brow. And when you get really, really close and in person, you don't see anything. But I mean, how easy is that? Wow. Look at her eyebrows, ladies. Can That's you believe that? Incredible. That's incredible. Wow. It looks like I spent 20 minutes arching that sucker. Yeah. And all I did was add tiny little fibers to it. So look directly at the camera. We'll go over that again. Always following the growth of the hair, going up towards the arch. And then once you get to the arch, we bring it down with the tip of the brush. That way it gets really thin, not too thick. Adding the little fibers towards the end where she was complaining about her brows being a little thinner. And look at that sexy mama. Mm -hmm. Huh. Wow. So even if you have an extra one minute, it's you can apply these and just add it to your cute and carpool. Oh, so now I'm going to show you guys how to go from carpool to cocktails. And we're going to go over some mistakes that women make very frequently in the eye area. So you can use things with shimmer on the eyelid, but only the eyelid. So I'm going to show you a really pretty neutral shade. It's called Doe Eyes. Um, it's kind of like a topaz <clears throat> color. It's got a little bit of frost. 
And I think that when you use things with frost on the eyelid, especially if you have a smaller, smaller, gradually getting smaller eyelid, right? This is going to make your eyelid pop more because the shimmer is going to bring it forward. Oh, also the whole use, eyelid. Yep. So that's the, probably the number one mistake I see often is mm -hmm. that. Um, but if you put a little bit of shimmer just right there over the eyeball, go back and forth. Don't think where the skin folds is your crease. Your crease is the area between the eyeball and the brow bone. So mm -hmm. I was going too far down with my eyeshadow for a long time, but just cover up the entire eyeball and kind of fade it out and go lighter as you go up. So now when she opens her eyes, you see it just gives her a little bit of depth there, yeah. but it also kind of brings the eyelid yeah. forward at the Plus same time. small eyes. Me too, I have a very small eyelid, a lot of space, small eyelid, extra yeah, skin and crease. Yeah. I'm gonna change your lap for just a minute. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> so tap, 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 that way you're not flicking it all over your face. Starting over the eyeball, going from corner to corner all the way up to the true crease of the eye. I always thought the crease was where I felt the bone right here. That is, yep. So the area between, so let's take a brush right in the crease. So this is your brow bone, this is your eyelid. The crease is right, right there in between. There. Almost like you're sticking your brush in between the eyeball and the brow bone and the crease. Oh. So, I'm going to show you the crease color. When you look at these two shades right here, shimmer. Don't shimmer crease your crease. Yeah, no shimmer at all, nice don't and matte. Crease. Don't shimmer it. This, I'm going to keep your eyes open, apply, let's look down at the floor. Apply between the eyeball and the brow bone, going back and forth, and I'm giving more of a gradient effect where it's just fading it up into the brow lift product. Mm -hmm. So now when you look into the mirror, do you see how it's giving her a little bit more of a setback? No, her eyes or apply change. this, and it makes your eyes look tighter. You see that? Just like I did with the bronzer on the neck and on the cheekbones, I'm putting something that's darker than her skin tone between the eyeball and the brow bone, Creating the illusion of a shadow and a setback. Girl, look how much tighter her eyelids look. Your eye just got I like tight look eyelids. Don't we like it all tight? I like it all tight. <laughs> <laughs> tight and lifted. <laughs> Big difference though. I'm loving the eyebrows. I can't get over the eyebrows. The eyebrows look amazing. But the nice thing about this is a lot of people say, oh, I can't do eyeshadow. It's too complicated. Because you watched a YouTube video from a 14 year old for going for the nightclub look. Yeah. She used 15 eyeshadows that were in one palette. Don't feel like you have to use every color in your naked palette. That's a great palette, but can just pick two, make it easy. Shimmer on your lid, matte in the crease. Boom, done. Shimmer on the lid, matte in the crease. Yep. Any idiot go. could do that, even me. Yes, a third grader could do it. Now, what colors are good for women? Because, you know, sometimes, you're right, you watch these YouTube videos and they do these incredible things with purples and blues mm -hmm. and really, should we be going there or should we stick to the neutrals? This is what I think. The Estee Lauder Blockbuster set has got to sell somehow. So they're <laughs> going to put a different color in than they put it in the last 85 years they've come out with it. I don't believe in using eyeshadow as color on your face. To me, it's not about looking like a box of Crayolas blew up on your face. You can do little pops of color, like your eyes are hazel, if you want to look more green, by just smudging out like purple eyeliner. Like I did on her, like the navy to make her eyes look more blue. So I don't really think it's about color around your eyes. I think it's using shimmer versus non-shimmer and not going too dark or too light with your eyeshadows. Mm. Just keep it kind of neutral. And then if you want a tiny little pop of color, just put it in the corner next to your eyeliner. Right. I'll show you how to do that in just one second. Okay. But do you see how easy that is for like mm -hmm. every day? Now I'm going to use eyeliner. So here is the really cool trick that we do that not every other cosmetic line does, but I am going to tell you the truth. I stole it from Laura Mercier. And it's going to work for her. I absolutely love this technique. So just some holy water from the Houston tap. It's going to be the very last bottle I pick up. And I'm just spritzing it on a flat liner brush. It can be an angled or a flat, but it needs to be a really thin one. And when you work it into the product, you want to make a nice shoe polish type paste. I thought about and considered doing a gel eyeliner, which these ladies were asking about earlier. You could do a gel liner as well, but the only downside to those, you never get through the whole bottle before it dries out and you really can't re-liquify it. So to me, it's just kind of a waste of money. I want to use something to the bitter end. I want to wear those heels until the heels fall off. <laughs> okay. So I like being able to add water, but it's the same technique. You're just juicing it up first with some of your holy water from the Houston town. Why is it holy? <laughs> I know, because I blessed it with the Ginger <laughs> Kelly cosmetics. <laughs> and so chin high. Keep your eyes open and look at the floor. When I apply this product, I'm going to flip her lid up so you guys can see how I'm going underneath the root of the lash. Hmm. So you want to get right up in that membrane where the hair comes out, corner to corner. Don't eye line your eyes halfway like the phone rang and you forgot what you were doing. Go left to right. Hmm. Don't just make it abruptly stop. Chin high, look down. Then I'm going to apply some on top, still wiggling it into the root of the lash. I don't like to use pencils because you can't really get up in there and the wax of the pencil doesn't adhere to that little wet membrane. Look down this way, I kind of feel the same thing with the liquid liner. It burns when it gets into your eyes. This is a nice clay, very quick dry time. You can see on my hand how it's already drying. It ain't going nowhere. Look down. 
and then also you can play kind of connect the dots with it instead of dragging it across your eyelids and getting that dotted line okay mm -hmm. here's another mistake women make is they draw their eyes down mm -hmm. if you are trying to look more lifted and more youthful and you want to wipe 10 years off your eyes do not drag things out and down you want everything to lift up so I'm gonna turn my little angled brush like this and I'm gonna give her a little bit of a dovetail, kind of taper it off, go thinner as I go in. And now when you look into the camera, do you see how hold your chin up a little bit? How her eye is just gradually mm -hmm. lifting up, not dragging down. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, huh? Very natural. Wow. That's great. You can actually have an eyelid. Normally when I put my yes. eyeliner on, I don't have an eyelid. And it's all of a sudden you're like, I did a smoky eye and I was trying to balance it out because it got thicker on one side. And I'm like, oh, that, wow. I, that's not what I wanted. I'm not going to the ACDC concert. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see how thin that looks? It gives a nice, crisp, crisp yeah, defined beautiful. look, but you still see her eyelid when she's blinking, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Turn this way, chin high, look down. I always recommend when you're doing your own eyeliner that you hold your chin high and you look down into one of those little TJ Maxx swivel mirrors. We all have one at home. You just look down on your vanity and that way you're not having to hold on to a mm. mirror and you're not trying to do it four feet away from your wall mirror. So always look down into it and press and wiggle and kind of connect the dots, turning your brush up at the end to give that lift. Thinner as you go in and not stopping halfway. So now she's got a nice, crisp, defined edge. Take a look again. Now, here is, this is surpasses the shimmer thing, let's be honest. The number one mistake that I see women 40 plus <clears throat> making are y'all ready? Are you sitting down? <laughs> no. <laughs> bottom eyeliner. Oh, Stop yes. the madness. No more bottom eyeliner. I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to tell you what your friends don't because all your friends are talking about you. They're inboxing me <laughs> your bottom eyeliner pictures and they're trying to get you in here because they don't know. It happened yesterday. Okay. All the girls at Cross Creek Ranch wearing my stuff and there was one left with bottom eyeliner and they finally got her in yesterday. She's like, why didn't anybody tell me? <laughs> friends don't tell friends when they wear bottom eyeliner. That's my job. Okay. So what does bottom eyeliner do? And I used to wear it too. Okay. It drags your eyes down. So we all want to look younger. We want to look like our skin did in the late 20s, early 30s. We want everything to be brighter and tighter. We always have to be like things tight and lifted, like this, we're doing this in the mirror. Putting weight at the bottom of your eye, it's the law of color. Mascara and eyeliner down here is gonna drag things down. You can see how lifted, she does not look unfinished or tired or not awake. She just looks everything lifted and bright. Real tired. She sees the light and it's under her eyes. <laughs> it's under my eyes. And then she was asking about fun colors. So mm -hmm. since her eyes are hazel, I see a little bit of green towards the outside and yellow and brown in the middle. So that's a true hazel eye when you've got a little I bit of both. I hazel eyes. I always thought yeah. they were brown. There's some green in there. Oh. So you can use like a deep purple. So chin high, hold your mirror with your right hand in between us. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to smudge out that line with something a little bit darker. But it's barely even noticeable that it's purple. It's not going to stand out that it's like lilac or something on her eyes. I'm going up towards the crease with it. And see how that's just giving you a little bit more of a smoky effect? Mm -hmm. Giving you a little bit more color around your eyes like I did on her earlier with the navy. She has blue eyes and blonde hair. There you go. So it's giving a little bit more depth to the outside and a little bit more color around her eye, but not obvious. So take that's a look up right. close with the mirror. Oh yeah. That's nice. Isn't that pretty? It's very subtle. So again, I'm using a dry brush. It's called the Smoky Eye Smudge Brush. I'm kind of cupping the edge of the eyelid going right around the lash line and up towards the crease. I don't want to put the really dark color in the crease. That's another thing that I used to do in the 90s when I first learned makeup. White eyeliner. Who did the white eyeliner? Oh my gosh, right? like yes. Our small eyelids look huge. <laughs> and then we would take a dark chocolate French rose color right to the crease. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard to balance and get it to look the same on both sides. Don't make it that complicated. Plus that doesn't even look good. And you're not faking it for anybody. That's like stage makeup. This looks so pretty and natural. And to make our eyelid pop, I'm gonna take another shimmer product. So we know how much you girls love your shimmer. And we're gonna place this chin high, look down, right over the iris, just in the center, kind of blend it from side to side. Instead of highlighting in the inner corner like we were doing, which is pulling the eyes further apart, ain't trying to do that, is we put this right there over the eyes. So see when she's blinking, she gets a little bit more come forward, right, with the highlight. Mm -hmm. So chin high. Oh, I love this one. It's called Blush and Bashful because the colors of my wind <laughs> Blush and Bashful. Who knows that? You know? no there you go. We oh. got a southern girl in here. <laughs> there you go. Look how pretty. Yeah. Now, if you're trying to wean yourself off the bottom liner and you're like, oh, I just yeah, can't do it. I just look so naked and I feel like I look sick and tired. Desert, sorry, uh, doe eyes is a really good color that you can use in the weaning off process. So look up. If you really feel like you need something, you can take this and kind of dust this eyeshadow instead of an eyeliner mm. right into the root of the lash to make you feel like you have a little bit more of a frame. You can still do this for nighttime, but I prefer nothing at all. So you can see on my under eyes, there's just nothing. I like it blank, 
like it natural. I want makeup to be believable and look like an enhanced version of you and not a third grade art project on your face. Mm -hmm. so. All right. <laughs> And I think that that is an issue with, with women as they get older. They, they tend to get severe makeup, thinking that that makes them look more youthful, more by, youthful piling more on. by piling it on. But you're saying the opposite is true. You want that dewy, yep, you want creamy, neutral. dewy skin. Stay away from matte foundations. Not to talk bad about other brands, but there's some brands that are known for a really matte look. That's what we used to use a lot for television. But now things are changing, and more reflection of light mm -hmm. just looks more youthful to me. Dry and matte, think of the desert, dry, cracked. You don't want that on your face. Chin high, look down. Now I'm another white eyeliner on the bottom, not on the waterline. So you mean like on the inside down mm -hmm. here? Okay, so I have, um, or I used to have a customer when I worked at Neiman Marcus um, who had epilepsy and her epilepsy medicine makes her eyes, the whites of her eyes very, very red. So to counteract that, we used to use a Dolce & Gabbana beige mm. flesh tone. I don't like pure white on the inside. Okay. It just looks mm. like you have Elmer's glue more, in your eye. More mm -hmm. beige. But if you have like Dolce & Gabbana, it's a really good, I think it's number one or number four, it's the flesh tone one, mm -hmm. that would be okay. okay. But then it starts to mix with your <coughs> eyeliner and look gray by the end of the day. So I just say get your concealer as close as possible to cancel out the redness at the root of the lash and then you won't really feel like you need it look down now we're going to talk about blush another mistake that i see almost every day in my store is women who come in here and get so excited to show me how they did their own makeup <laughs> and they have their blush from their ear to their nose <laughs> honey we don't do that no more <laughs> we actually stopped doing that back in 2004 but some people have old habits that die hard right so what we do instead is we use a bronzer or a brown tone blush over here like I showed you guys in the cute and carpool portion of the video, right? Mm -hmm. Turn towards the light and smile. This is the apple of your cheek. Get that real cheesy smile when you look in the mirror and the round part that sticks out, that is the apple. Where do you naturally flush or blush? On the apple. Mm -hmm. Why are we putting blush like this? Nobody wants a hot pink racing stripe down their Camaro on their cheeks like this, okay? We don't do that with makeup. So smile for me real big. We just put this right here, keep the apples on the tree and off the ground, none of this business. <laughs> and think of me every morning when you're putting your blush on and say, but I want to drag it over here. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Don't do it. I do want to Look how much more volume she has yeah. on the apple of her cheek, and that looks believable. You yeah. are 14. I'm you're saying, 14. I'm going to give you 13 and a half. <laughs> I never wanted to go out with her, but I do now. Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm so excited. <laughs> We have so many hot dates today. All these girls are gonna take her home. Now, what do you do? You do the blush up here because that's, that's nope. no, no. That starts looking that's, like a that. That is more of the we're paint. No, we didn't do that. Okay, so we're doing the um, contouring up here, right? We do the contour. It depends on the face shape. Okay. So for you, I just kind of focused it through here. If someone's got a six head and their forehead, it's kind of like mine, goes all the way back, and you want to minimize that, you can bronze through here. Keep in mind, anywhere you put that bronzer is gonna slim things and suck it in. If you've two inch forehead, like a real small one like this. Don't put any bronzer around your temples or forehead. You're gonna make it look even smaller, okay? So you're shadowing on your face through here. I just put it up into your temples a little bit and all the way down here for the neck lift trick. Now, you can't even really notice her from Lasma unless you stare. No, you can't. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. You look so pretty. What about highlighter? Highlighter, okay, so highlighter is something you can do if you want, but I would probably keep it for the ladies of the evening or if you're going to an event or a gala oh, or something. I've been using in it In daylight, well you can, but just keep in mind what's happening is if you don't disport or Botox here and you have crow's feet to stretch across, uh -huh. if you put highlighter on that, every one of those lines are gonna be amplified. Interesting. Okay? okay. So you can use concealer, right, to highlight, or you could use a little bit of that princess powder that I've used on you right here, a little bit just right here on top of your cheekbones. I'm gonna show you where it goes. J-Lo always highlights. She always looks so good. Yeah, but she has a lot of money to get a lot of plastic <laughs> surgery. <laughs> and there's not a wrinkle or a melasma no, on her No, there is face. nothing on her. So I want you to hold the mirror right here. I just put a tiny bit of that little shimmer shadow. And you can see when you look close how it kind of accentuates mm -hmm. the line just a little bit. But for night, it's My okay. diasport hasn't kicked in yet. I need another week or two. I know, I, always know time. <laughs> I know it's time. It's been six months. It was time. It was when my eyelids start getting a little bit more saggy. My makeup starts sitting on my forehead. And I'm like, yep, it's time. Mm -hmm. Wow. It just, just looks brightened. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's still pretty, but just keep in mind if someone's really close and up in your face, it's going to look like it's more mm -hmm. settled. But after the bisport kicks in, honey, you can put the shimmer on a little Yeah, I'll put it all over. But I like that. Do you want to try a little bit brighter lip? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. So blot your lips. I'll show you guys the ombre lip trick. Something different, maybe you've not seen before. When you're at the department store and you're trying different products on, 
you guys know that you can't go in there and start rubbing the lipstick off and go into the next shade because everything's gonna look more rosy and red than it normally looks. So what you can do <coughs> is take a little bit of concealer or foundation and canvas your lips between each color. That way you're not mixing mm. the colors together and creating something that doesn't exist without buying 27 shades. Oh. And we're gonna powder your lips. You got a nice clean canvas. So this little guy right here is the Plum Wine. So we treat our lip liners more like lip stains. And with this one, I'm shading almost all the way around the lip, very light, but more in the outer corner, like a little triangle shape in the corner of the lip. And what I'm doing is, same as the bronzer, I'm essentially contouring her lips. I'm adding shadows to the outer edge, which pushes this in. So when I'm done, it's gonna look like she had some lip injections. Going all the way around the edge, lighter as I go in. Then I take my lighter colored lip liner, which is called Holly Berry, and we're gonna use this towards the inner portion of her lip. And the reason why I fill in the lip with these guys is they're waterproof, so they don't come off all day mm. long. You eat a cheeseburger and you'll have the stain on there. It stains your lips. And we're choosing this one because it's a nice fall shade. I like to go a little bit more plum. Mm -hmm. We go darker with our clothing. We wear more black and gray in the wintertime, so I like this with those kind of color families. So I'll massage your lips together, and I'm not Love done. You. But you can see how that's already creating oh, more yeah. dimension to her lip. Oh, it's neat. It's home gray. Isn't that cool? That's great. Oh, so cool. creating the dimension of light versus dark. And then you mm -hmm. see my lip balm. So my lip balm is called Lip Dew, and this is the original color. We do have it in a pink or a red. Mm, you want this good too. Like oranges, huh? Mm -hmm. Got vitamin C in there, yeah. avocado oil, really good for dry lips to put on after you wash your face at night or to put over the lip liner so they're not dry. And that mm -hmm. definitely brightens your face up. Isn't that cool? <laughs>